Hello everyone, Gomrath here, and today I'm going to be giving you a guide on the best pets to catch out in Pandaria. This was one of my favorite expansions, I know it was probably the second least popular, only second to the horrible expansion of Cataclysm, which I didn't really get experience because I was serving a mission for the LES Church during that time. But yeah, so I'm going to be talking about all the pets that are here in Pandaria. So I'm starting in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, which is like not necessarily the neutral zone, but it's a zone that like there's the Alliance Capital base and there's the Horde base. So in this zone, there's actually a wild caught pet that is an aqua pet and, or aquatic type. And you know, I don't think I've actually talked about a single aquatic type pet so far in like all these videos that I've done, but Here's one that I actually use, and he's really strong versus tamers. And let's see, is it the Eternal Strider? Let's see, which one? Nope. Yeah, the Eternal Strider. Okay, so these Eternal Striders are awesome. They are a power speed breed, and they absolutely destroy elemental type pets. And he is really fantastic for a particular tamer. I use him against Farmer Nishi, who has two elemental pets and he can blow through both the first two elemental pets and usually do about a thousand damage to the third pet so i would pick up a power speed breed of this guy and they're just found over here just right outside of mogushin palace and yeah other than that the pets in here meh yellow bellied frog i think oh actually yeah i'll talk about the yellow bellied frog really quick so this guy he is a double counter to elemental types and he's a power power breed and most of the frogs do not have a power power breed and even the power power breed for this frog is pretty garbage like 309 for a power power breed i mean he's got an extra what 1100 health which isn't a ton and he's really really slow but he's decent versus undead you know because he's got uh critter type moves here so i'd also snag one of these power power yellow bellied uh bullfrogs and that'll do it for the veil of eternal blossoms all right we are now in kunlai summit which is one of the cooler zones in the game like it just looks awesome especially when you have a computer that can run it on ultra graphics uh and he's got one of my favorite pets in the game and that is the kunlai runt now the kunlai runt he is a powerhouse Okay, so he's a humanoid pet that's got the customary three beast type attack. So he's a double counter to critters, but also he's got this awesome frost, lock, frost shock and deep freeze combo, which absolutely will destroy everybody but critters, you know, because it'll stun them and do tons and tons of damage. And then you can also pair it with takedown. So you could go frost shock, deep freeze, takedown. And anyway, most pets cannot survive that. Now these guys are found all up along these mountains here, like outside of the Shadow Pen Monastery and the Temple of the White Tiger up all along here. So I would definitely recommend picking up a Power Power Breed. And then the other pet I want to talk about who I kind of wanted to try out is the Summit Kid. He's got the exact same moveset as like the Black Lamb and what's that goat? It's like the black ram and the black lamb. So what combo this guy has, you can do chew and then run stampede and then get a double damage off of chew. And, you know, the black lamb actually hits harder than this guy. So he's basically just a black lamb, but with not as good of a breed. And he's also cool looking, so I'd snag him while you're up here. But other than that, I mean, there's the two fishing pets that you get. And then there's the Pandaren spirit which you snag from beating uh, the Thundering Pandaren Spirit. But that'll do it. Oh, you know what? Before I forget, I want to talk about... Where's the Isle of Giants? Yeah, it's just right up here. So the Isle of Giants, I know it's not technically Kunlai, uh, Kunlai Summit, but it's just off of Kunlai Summit. Okay, it's got a ton of pets out here. And you don't catch them. They're rare drops, but they're not that rare. Like, you can go in there and farm for just, like, an hour, and you will get multiples of all these pets. Also, it's got the Spectral Porcupine that you get for turning in, I think it's 1,000 bones or 999 bones uh, to a guy who's in a cave there. But the pets you got to pick up is the Zandalari Ankle Render. 
Now, I recommend the Power Power Breed. I gave my older brother a Power Power Breed, and then he gave me this one uh, because I'm a great younger brother. But this guy right here can shred pets. You just throw out Black Claws and Hunting Party, and he can tear apart most legendary pets in the game. So definitely go out to the Isle of Giants and snag yourself these raptor pets or you can pick them up on the auction house they're really not that expensive so that'll do it for uh coon lice all right i'm making my way right now into the tao long steps which is another cool zone i just really loved pandaria like the quests and the lore behind this zone are so awesome um as far as pets to catch here there's nothing really special honestly there really isn't um, I mean, you can get the Pandaren Fire Spirit for fighting, uh, the Pandaren Fire Spirit. He's, like, right over there, um, or on the map right up there. But, really, nobody to pick up here that's really significant to your pet battle experience. And then on the Isle of Thunder, they do have a, uh, Thundertail Flapper, who's decent, but there's a much better pet that's out in Draenor, or not drain or the broken isles the stormstruck beaver who's got a very similar uh very similar build but instead of thunderbolt he's got discharge and it hits super super hard it's single target and it makes you it turns you into a critter which can be situationally useful but yeah i've seen this guy in a couple of pvp teams and he's pretty solid so nothing out on the isle or isle of thunder either so that'll do it for this zone All right, I'm out here in the Dreaded Wastes, and there are two fantastic pets here. Now, there's actually a couple pets that drop that are rare drops, like Grinder and the Aqua Strider, but they're nothing incredible. You know, I've leveled them up, but never really use them. But one pet that is fantastic, or two pets that are fantastic, are the Rabana Welk, or Rapana, Rapana Welk. He's a snail, he's a double countered elemental types. And he can roll, he does not roll the health power. So actually, you know, he's decent, he's a high level snail, but I would go out to High Mountain and pick up the snails out there because they can roll health power. You never want an SS snail, they're absolutely garbage. Now the other pet that is just top tier is the Emperor Crab, okay? This guy is a tier one pet, he is fantastic. He's found in the same area. I'm having a hard time seeing one on my mini map, but that's also because I've got the little icon that shows how long I'm recording up there. But they're out here. And, okay, what makes this guy so powerful is look at that attack, 357, okay? So he's slow as you can be, but he hits really hard. Now, heals are based entirely off of power. So his heal heals for 565 damage. That is a third of his health, okay? And he can use it every three turns. So it is fantastic. Also, this guy is fairly good uh, against the, oh, what's that horrible pet that I hate? The Terraclaw Hatchling. And he also totally counters um, teams that run Haunt, like the Unborn Valkyrie or the Wicked Soul. All you have to do is throw up Shell Shield. And because Aquatic types, Harmful damage over time effects are reduced by 50%. So he can totally negate haunt. Yeah, so I would definitely come here, grab yourself a snail if you don't have one yet, and uh, pick up the Power Power Emperor Crab. He is a beast, and that'll do it for this area. Also, I'll briefly mention, you know, you got the Pandir and Water Spirit. It used to be one of the best PvP slash PvE pets in the game because it had Whirlpool and Geyser on two different uh levels where it was like you could have whirlpool here and geyser here but they found that it was too powerful and so they made it so they're on the same tier and you can only take one of them but ironically when you go fight the pandaren water spirit he still can have both of them now how is that fair blizzard okay if you nerf him you should nerf him for everybody including the npc but that'll do it for the dreaded waste all right, we are out in the Krasserang Wild. For some reason, I always think of like a cowboy saying that. I don't know why. 
just because it sounds kind of weird. Krasarang. But there's nothing special out here. I mean, they got these turtle pets who are kind of cool that I like. Uh, you know, they got a decent heal. They can run either run Powerball, which speeds them up. And they just also look cool. But really, nothing special out here. Nothing special at all. Oh, except, you know what? The uh, Feverbite Hatchling. I mentioned this in several zones, but it's just a spider that has a power power breed. I think there's only three or four spiders that can have power power breeds. And they're double counters to humanoids, where they just kick the crap out of them and can steal tons of health back with life leech. So just pick yourself up a uh, Feverbite Hatchling here. That's it. All right, we are in the Valley of the Four Winds, and I want to briefly talk about a pet that's really awesome. And recently, I got my pants handed to me by this guy, the little bandicoon, okay? He was an SS breed. He was running Powerball Survival and Tongue Lash, and he was fantastic. Like, he totally destroyed my bone serpent, just killed him really, really quickly. And the thing is, is that this guy, as an SS breed, has 325 speed, which is pretty good. It's not quite, you know, hair level, but with uh, Powerball, Here's the thing, is it increases your speed by 20% indefinitely. So if you Powerball twice, your speed is like 450,000 million. Not really, but it's really fast. And you can outspeed flying types. And when you have a high speed value, you can cast Survival a turn. Like if you, let's say, have 15 health left and you cast Survival, it allows you to survive for two more turns. And what you can do is you can take damage that would kill you, switch into the back line, and then bring him out when like the next pet dies. And anyway, yeah, I would just pick up a Bandicoon. He's really solid in PVP. Everything else in the zone is terrible. All right, we are now in the Jade Forest. We are wrapping up our tour of Pandaria, the best pets of Pandaria. And as you can see, there is a ton of pets here. I mean, look at that. There's very few zones that have that many pets. I mean, if you go to like your capital city, it'll list a bunch of pets, but they're not all really there. They're from bonus events, but all these pets are actually here. So the pets I would pick up out here are all these uh, hatchlings like this. Hatchling dragon. Okay, so you need to be exalted with the Order of the Cloud Serpent, and I am on a couple guys. But these guys are just so cool. I mean, they're literally tiny little uh, dragon serpent things. So, yeah, they're just awesome. And they're all over the place in here. And you can only see them if you are exalted with uh, the Order of the Cloud Serpent. Because I've come here on other guys and you cannot even see these guys unless you have them. So, yeah, that wraps up Pandaria. Those were my top picks out of the pets here. If there was any pets you feel like I forgot or, you know, I wasn't clear on anything, make sure to let me know in the comments below. It's a pleasure gaming with you, and I hope you guys have a fantastic night. You take care.